Hey, welcome to the Makerspace. Today, we are working on some beaded bracelets. These are the sort of things that you'd see at craft fairs or online, but I've changed the recipe a little bit to make these a lot easier to make. Now, if you enjoy the process of making these bracelets, then you can use the skills that you learn to make the fancier ones using these smaller beads. But we'll talk about how I've changed the recipe as we work on it. So let's jump into this project right now, okay? Now you're going to need a couple of things for this project. To start with, you're going to need a loom, something that can hold the string across it that we can weave our bracelet onto. And this is a very simple loom design that I made using 3D printing and a square dowel. And I'll show you later how I made that. You're also going to need a short length of jewelry chain doesn't need to be fancy. And then we're going to need some clasps for the end of that jewelry chain, as well as some jumpers to hold those clasps onto the jewelry chain. You're also going to need some large needles. And it's important that the needles have a large head, but that it's not so big that it can't go through our beads. Fortunately, I'll be talking about the beads later. We're using some really big beads for this project. Also, I'm using for string, just fishing wire because fishing wire is easily accessible. Now there is special beading wire, which you could use or beading string, which you could use. And that's fine if you want to use it, but really it's about the same size as fishing wire. And I found fishing wire cheaper and easier to get a hold of. You're also going to need needle nose pliers and a pair of clippers to manipulate the chain at the end. And for the end of your design, for the end of your bracelet, you're going to need to have a couple of these 3D printed end caps to make it easier to put on. And we'll talk about these when we get to that point. You are also going to need a hot glue gun and something to cut the strings like a X-Acto knife or box cutter. Either one will work. Lastly, we're going to need a bunch of perler beads. Now, perler beads are much, much bigger than regular beading beads, but they're the secret to making this project quick and easy because they're so big. They're easy to use, they're easy to manipulate, and this project will be done a lot faster than if we were doing the smaller, fancier ones. And you might say, but don't the smaller ones look better? Well, sure, but if you do this project with perler beads, then you will have a lot of skills that can transfer to using the smaller beads if you want to do that. And if not, if you, if you look at this and go, well, that was fun, I don't ever want to do it again, you did it with perler beads. And they're cheap and they're fast to use and you had a good experience. So that's why I'm recommending perler beads for these beginner bracelets. Now, this loom, if you don't have one, you can make your own using 3D printing like I did. Let me show you a little bit about that. So if you need to make the loom, you're going to start with the 3D printed parts and a stick. Now in the original, the stick was round, but I modified my ends for the square stick that I have. You are also going to need two small screws and two to six small nails. Now I'm not going to be specific about the nails or the screw sizes because I just got mine by fishing in my extra screw and nail bucket that used to be a bucket of nuts. And if you don't have one of these where you've just been collecting screws from various projects over a long time, uh, go ask your grandpa. I guarantee he has almost that exact same one. You're also going to need some tools. I have this three ounce hammer, four ounce hammer. Uh, I got this from Home Depot. They have those Saturday projects and those hammers are great for it. It's gonna need a screwdriver. And then I also use a pair of needle nose pliers to hold the nail to save my fingers. So let's put this together. We're gonna start by putting the stick in both ends. And then we're going to need to nail down the ends. And like I said, I use the needle nose pliers to hold the nail in place while I hammer it so that if I slip, I am not hitting my fingers. So here we go. That's one side and now the other side. 
There we go, and that's that's pretty good, that's pretty stable. You can add extra nails to the side if you want for stability, but now we're just going to take those small screws and we're going to screw them into the end, but we're not gonna screw them in all the way, we're gonna leave them sticking out so that we can put the string on them when we make our loom, so here we go. And that's it, this bracelet loom is ready to make some bracelets on. So with our loom all done, we're gonna take that and put it aside for now because the next thing that you need is a pattern to work off of. You need to kind of plan ahead what you're gonna do. You don't just wanna freehand this. So I've created a couple of different patterns that you can use and I found that it's best to have an odd width on these and then only about 30 across. So they are either seven or some of them are five across by 30. So five width or seven width. And if you don't like any of these patterns, that's fine, just grab a piece of graph paper, cut off a five by 30 piece of graph paper, and then use crayons or markers or whatever. Start planning out your pattern as best you can. Try to limit yourself to just a couple of different colors. Don't go crazy with that stuff. And if it doesn't work, if you, if you start doing it and you're like, oh, this isn't working out, fine. Get another one, do it again. Keep going until you have it good. This is the planning phase, and so give yourself some time for that. Now, I think for this one, I'm gonna use this pattern here because it's a little bit of a double helix, like a DNA strand, and I kinda like that pattern. So that's the pattern that I'm gonna be going with. And if you look at these patterns and you're like, okay, I like the general shape of it, but I don't like the colors, this one's too, fiery, maybe I want something a little bit cooler, maybe I have a favorite color that I want to put in here. Well, no problem, just change the color. They're all numbered as well as colored. Make note of it on the side and whenever you see a red four, change it out for whatever color you want and go with that. To get started here, take your fishing wire, go to the end of the fishing wire, leave it on the spool, don't cut it off. Just take a length of the fishing wire and then bend it over so you have a little loop in it, and then just tie a little overhand knot with that loop. Now I gotta make mine a little bit bigger because my hands are huge, but try to make the loop that comes at the end of it as small as you can. Doesn't need to be too small. That's about right right there. And I've got a lot of string dangling off the end here, so I'm just gonna grab my scissors or clippers and just cut that off. Perfect. Now you take the little loop on the end of your string there and you put it on the screw on one end of the, the loom. Put your thumb on it to try and convince it to go as far close to the plastic as you can, and then go straight up with that and find the middle notch in your loom right there, and then just go a little bit to the left of it right there. So we're actually not going to use the middle loop or the middle notch there. We're going to use just to the left and just to the right of it. We're gonna only use every other one. Go to the other side, Try to find the one that matches it, which I do by going straight up and then going one to the left. There it is, okay? And then go around the screw. Now, I don't go around the screw like a U, like that. I instead try to cross over like that when I do it. And then skip one. So I went up that one right there, so I'm going to skip it and go that one right there. Go back across. And again, every other one here, so not there, but there. And then do a crossover and come back here. Now this right here, this thread right, these two threads right here will have one bead between them. So this is for one bead on the loom right here. So how many of these do we need? Well, I'm doing a five wide one, so we're going to need six strings. So again, do that just every other one, there we go, and back to the other side. A little crossover twist if you want. And then I do the other side. I just like to work from the middle out. That way I can keep things symmetrical. You could work from one end to the other if you want, but here we go. We have one, two, three strings, or one, two, three beads worth of string here. Let's go around and here on this side, then to there. And I get it, got it, good. All right, that is my five 
beads worth of string on my loom. So now we need to tie this off on the end. Now you want it to remain kind of tight, but it's kind of difficult to tie a knot around there tight. So here's what I do. I loop the end of the string under the string that's coming out, put it on there and then pull it tight. Now that in and of itself isn't gonna hold it very tight, but if I do that a couple more times, take the string, loop it under and put it around there and then pull it tight. And then I'm gonna do that a third time, loop it under, put it around, pull it tight. That creates a kind of knot on the end there. And then I create a real knot. I just go around, well actually I need to cut off this end of the string here. There we go. And I just use that to tie a proper knot around here. Just an overhand knot. Actually, what I do here is I use a knot where I go around the string once and then around the string again. Ooh, this is difficult at this angle for me. So I'll put a, a illustration on the screen of that knot and then I'm gonna just tie it off camera here. Now, with the loom all strung up with as many strings as I need, and remember, if you're doing one of the seven wide, you'll need to make yours wider than mine. Make sure that you have enough gaps for the number of beads that you need. Then I'm going to take a length of fishing wire. Now, how much is a length of fishing wire? Uh, it depends. It doesn't need to be long enough to finish the job. We'll talk about that later. I, generally speaking, make it about um, three feet, a meter long, as long as my arm. You could make it shorter if you find that that's too much to work with, but let's just, let's just measure out a length of this and cut it off. And then we need to tie it onto the start here, but we don't want to start right close to the end of the loom. We want to leave about one or two fingers width. I have big fingers. My one finger is probably two for you. Then we take the string, put it around the end here, and I'm just going to tie this with a simple double overhand knot. That is to say, I'm going to, like I did before, loop it around the inside of the knot twice, and then pull it tight and remember to try and keep it about a finger's width from the end. It might slide a little bit. We're not too worried about that. There we go. And then go to the other end of your string there we go. And this is where you put your needle on there. But there we go. I got it. Woohoo. Now you can pull that string as far down as you want. It'll give you more to work with, but you just need to have that needle strung. And now it's time to start beading. So using your pattern as a reference, and this may be the hardest part, you need to keep where you are in your pattern straight. You can't lose track and you can't do things backwards or you'll end up with it upside down and you don't necessarily want to do that. I suppose that wouldn't be too bad. You could just flip it over, but still it's important that you establish right now where you're working from. Now I tied mine in the upper right hand corner of the loom here, which means I should work from the upper right hand corner of my pattern. I could have just as easily done it from the lower left hand if I wanted to. It doesn't really matter, but since I'm starting on the upper left hand, then looking at my pattern, my first bead needs to be a nice dark red bead. Uh, this is the closest I have here. The next bead down needs to be a kind of lighter red bead. So we're gonna go with the pink on this one. Two whites, that's easy. One, two whites. There we go. And one blue, easy, one blue. There's the pattern, bring it to the end of the string. And then once it hits the loom, now to real beaters, if we were doing this with real beads, they oftentimes work from the bottom and then they hold the beads up with their fingers. But myself, I find it easier to use gravity, especially when using these larger perler beads. So I just let it lay across the top there but I make sure that one bead falls between each of the strings on the loom. Then once it's laid across there, you use your needle, you kind of press down on them with your thumb or up if you're using the traditional method, and you have to go underneath all of these strings through the, per through the beads 
as you go. So make sure that you don't accidentally lift up and go above any of the strings. It's important that that move right there go under all of the loom strings. Then you pull it tight and it just kind of makes a little loop on the end of the string here. My string is caught around the loom a little bit. There we go. Pull it tight. And it might even pull the loom just a little bit closed here, but that's all right. Okay. And there's our first line. Now, again, you go to the second line. And if you want to, you can use a pencil and scratch off that line so that you know that you've done it. But it's time to go to the second line. And my second line is pink, white, white, blue, blue. So here we go. Pink, white, white. Blue. Okay. Once I've got that line on there, and again, I didn't have, I didn't change direction. We're not going back and forth. I went from the same side. We're just doing this. Get it to the end of the string here. Lay it down next to the previous one. Make sure all the beads sit between the strings of the loom here. And then, once again, press down on it with your thumb and go underneath the loom strings through the bottom of the beads. Pull it tight. And there you go. There's two lines done. Now I'm going to keep following the pattern until I'm just about out of string and I'll see you at that point. So here we go. Wait, what? Oh, all right. Well, I just ran into a bit of a problem here. I, I think I accidentally uh, didn't string those two beads on properly. So I only ended up stringing three beads on this row. Now being a maker means being a problem solver. So how am I gonna solve this problem? Well, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back through the way that I'm supposed to, going along the, the first line goes over the top but then I'm just going to feed these two beads and I'm going to look very carefully at my pattern because it's real difficult to change beads after you've put them on. So it goes pink, then the reddish one. And then I'm gonna go back underneath all of them. So there's gonna be a lot of string in this particular row, but hopefully nobody will be able to tell because it'll all be hidden inside. It's possible as you're going that you may run into similar problems. And whenever you do, be a maker, be a problem solver, figure out what you need to do to keep going with the project. There are gonna be mistakes as you go and don't let that stop you from making, especially from finishing the job. Being a maker means making mistakes, but sometimes those mistakes are what we learn from. And if you can finish the job, it means that the next time when you do it, you'll be that much better at it and you'll do an even better job. <laughs> like for this time, I'm being very careful to go underneath the string so I don't make that same mistake again. All right, let's keep going. I got a couple more before I run out of string here. Well, this string is starting to get a little bit short. I could probably do one or two more rows, but honestly, I'm getting a lot further than I thought I was going to with this length of string. But if you are running out of string and you need to add some more on here, now 
in traditional methods, they have these fancy, like, okay, go in here and go out here and go down here and around and around, these fancy little, like, not knots, but they serve the purpose of knots by taking the end of the string and tying it in there, and then they do a fancy way to put it all back. I, I'm a lot more uh, simple than that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it off my needle, keep the end of it right there, grab another length of fishing wire, okay? And again, about three feet length of my arm, maybe not quite as long because I know how far three feet will last, but cut it off. And then we're going to just, because the perler beads are so big, we're just going to go ahead and tie these both together and we're going to use a simple knot to do it. It's, uh, it's like a square knot where you go one time around to make a knot and then you go the other direction with the other side. But instead of just going around it once, you're going to go around it twice like we did before. And this creates, uh, you know, kind of fishing wire knot. I'm going to take these long ends and I'm going to cut them off. And this knot is small enough that it will fit inside of the needle. It will fit inside, well, not so much the needle, but it'll fit inside the beads and we won't have to worry about any of that fancy knotting that traditional beaded bracelets do. But if you ever decide that you want to do traditional beaded bracelets, well, there are lots of tutorials online for how to do that. But for today, for today just, just tie a little square knot in there. And then once you've got more string, keep going. You know, I really do enjoy this kind of sort of repetitive, meditative action. You just kind of get into a groove, you get into a pattern, and you don't, you don't think about anything, you don't worry about anything, you're just relaxing and making and making something cool and you can see it develop in front of your eyes and, oh, it's the best. Too bad, that was lots of fun. Alright. String it on in there. Push down and send the needle underneath them all. Pull it tight. And there we go. This bracelet is done beaded, but we are not done with the bracelet. So next we need to tie off the string on the end here. And the way I'm gonna do that is with the needle, it's gonna be easier for me to just go around here. And then I'm just going to do a little loop, double loop around here, and then let it pull itself all the way to the end. Maybe I'll use the needle to make sure that it goes right up against that. And then pull that nice and tight. And that's all I'm going to do. I'm not going to, again, you know, the fancy ones, they'll tell you to go back and forth and around and do all kinds of fancy stuff. But I've got a trick for this one. So let's talk about the trick for finishing up these bracelets. All right, we have moved over to the hot glue gun station to finish this off. Now, if you are doing this the traditional way, a lot of times they'll have you cut the strings and then tie those two together and tie those two together and tie those two together. And then you got one left, but you got to tie it and tie those. Da, da, da. That is a lot of tying and uh, small string, big hands. I find that difficult. I've found an easier way. So here's the way we're going to do this, the beginner friendly way. Remember those ends that we 3D printed? Well, what you do is you take one of them and you put it underneath, making sure that one of the strings goes in each of the notches. And if you got a string dangling out, it might be good to just kind of tuck it in there. And then use the hot glue gun and just put a small bead of hot glue across all the strings. Take another one of them and squish it on top, hopefully before the, the glued hot glue sets or cools. Squish them together nice and tight. There we go. That's one end done. Now we'll do the other side exactly the same way. Take this, put it across all of the strings. Push it up on there. I'm gonna take this leftover string and kind of tuck it in there a little bit. 
There we go. That didn't stay, but that's all right. We'll put it in now. Bead of hot glue. Put the other one on top before it cools. And squish it down. That only takes a second, and then it's cool, and it's good to go. And hopefully that'll hold in place. Now, I have these loose strings hanging out the side here that I wasn't able to tuck into it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of my bigger needles. I'm going to string it through here, and then I'm going to just take the end of the string, put it into the head of the needle, and just pull it through so that it just kind of gets sucked into it like that. I'll just kind of hide it right there. Do the same thing on the other side. This one I may have to cut off a little bit, but that's all right. Perfect. All right, now that that's done, what we want to do is we want to cut off these strings as close to this as possible. That's what the box cutter is good for. Uh, you could potentially just cut these strings off of the loom and then cut them separately, however you want to do that. But just give that a nice, tight little pop off, get all of those strings cut off, and you should have a nice, clean bracelet. So I'll just finish that off now. Alright, so at this point we are done with the loom, so let's put that aside, and it is time to join the chain and the clasp to our bracelet. So what we're going to do is we need one length of chain for one side, and then a, another length of chain, possibly shorter, for the other side where we will attach the clasp onto it, and that's not real difficult. So just take the chain, find the loop that you want to cut. I'm not going to be super precise about this, just say right about there, and keep in mind this is going to fly, so there we go. We can throw that link away, we don't need it. Now we need to have one of these uh, jump rings attached on here, and so what you do is you look at the jump ring, and you try to find where it has, there it is, the cut in it. Use the needle nose pliers to bend it sideways, okay? Put the chain in one half, just link it on in there, and then link that into the bracelet. There we go. Link that into the bracelet, put the chain around it, and use the needle nose pliers to bend it back into place. Arrgh. Try to line that up as best you can. There we go. Easy. So now we've got our chain on one side and just do basically the same thing on the other side. There we go. Now on the shorter side, I like to do it on the shorter side, we are going to use one more jump ring to put the clasp on there. Now I, I try to make it so that when it lays naturally, the clasp points down, but it doesn't really matter. So let's do this. I'm going to use one of the uh, smaller clasps for this. That's not where the join is. There it is. There we go. And there we go. Now, in order to put the bracelet on, all you have to do is put it around your wrist and then put the clasp on the furthest chain. Oh, it looks like I may have to shorten my chain a little bit for my wrist. 
because I just need to be able to clasp it on there. I'll just clasp it on the smallest one that I can here. And that's it. I think it turned out really good. What do you think? This is totally a bracelet that I would be happy to give to friends and family. But what do you think? Are you gonna try it out? Of course, if you come to visit me at the St. George Library Makerspace, we have this equipment all here for you to try out yourself. But if you don't and you need to make it yourself, you can go into the description to get all the 3D print files that you need and the instructions for making this yourself. If you do try it out, do let me know about it. Come check us out on our Instagram and share us pictures of your builds. But either way, I wanna thank you very much for watching and I look forward to seeing you at the Makerspace. Bye.